Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to convert uh, MODIS imagery from an HDF format into GeoTIFF format using the HEG tool. So I've wanted to try MODIS imagery for a long time because it's pretty cool. Um, there's actually two MODIS sensors that fly aboard two different spacecraft, Terra and Aqua. They cover the entire Earth daily, which is so impressive. And they cover it at a, a variety of wavelengths, which is pretty cool. They have the first two bands are at 250 meter pixels. The next five bands are at 500 meter pixels. And then as you go out into the infrared, everything's at a one kilometer pixel. But there's a, a whopping 36 spectral bands. So it essentially acts as, you know, kind of a decent resolution imager down here in the visible and near infrared and then acts as a hyperspectral sensor at the far wavelengths, uh, but at lower spatial resolution. A lot of this is dedicated to studying the ocean. So anyway, lots of things you can do with MODIS data. Um, the problem for us is that the data are available in, <laughs> that should say, HDF format, and QGIS doesn't do very well with that. There have been some plugins that have tried, that have worked, but then they seem to stop working. So maybe a more robust way is to use the, the HEG tool to convert HDF into GeoTIFF. So let's uh, go through how to do that. Um, if you're in my class, you should just click along because you're going to want to do this and have this on your computer. OK, so first we'll download the tool and navigate to this site. Hopefully you can read that, wiki.earthdata.nasa.gov front slash display front slash DAS and uh, in here we will find the HEG tool we'll open that up go to downloads and I do really uh, we'll go to release 2.15 I recommend you read the documentation for this I'm going to show you how to do this for a Windows but if you're a Mac person um, you'll need to start out by downloading this Mac file um, and read the instructions. If you're a Windows person, stay with me. We're going to start by downloading this to our desktop. So click it, save it to your desktop, and then rejoin. OK, so that has now finished downloading. I'm going to go find that folder on my desktop. Here it is. I'll right click and uh, either use 7-zip or just use this, extract all. And I'm going to give the folder a different name. I'm going to call it on my computer, HEG Tool 2. It's going to extract in there. OK. And then once you've done that, you will go and look for this file, install.bat. And double click this. It should bring up your console uh, command window, ask you if you wish to proceed with the installation. Type Y and enter. Yes, you do. Now it's asking you to tell it what directory you'd like to use. For this, uh, you want to define the directory that you just created. So I go back here. I copy this, but I can't quite paste it because uh, if I were to paste it, it puts everything in with backslashes. And for some reason, the command window wants front slashes. So I'm going to retype it that same address using front slashes. So hold on while I do that. Okay, so I've got my desktop folder path with front slashes. I'll hit enter. I'll proceed with the install. I'll type Y, enter. Looks like it's going pretty well. Now it wants the path to my Java directory. So to find this on a PC, you'll go to local disk. Um, then to, pro, at least on mine, it's program files x86, Java, JRE 1.8. Um, if, if you're not finding a Java folder, it means you need to install the latest version of Java. That's very important. So if, if you don't have a, a recent version of Java, you need to install it and then just start this whole process over. Um, and then go into the bin folder. And that's what you want, actually, is that, that address right into the bin folder. 
So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause while I type that in using, using uh, front slashes instead of back slashes. OK, so you can see I've got the path to my Java bin directory here. Yours is going to be slightly different, uh, potentially, or it may be exactly the same. But uh, if you get it wrong, it won't work. You'll have to try again. So I'll hit Enter. Uh, please enter a username. For this, I've just been using a default username, Whamadon. Doesn't seem to matter. Press Enter key to create the dot .bat. Press Enter key to continue. Press Enter key to finish the installation. OK, so hopefully, if it has installed correctly, if everything went well, you'll now go back to your desktop, and you will find uh, your Heg Tool 2 folder, or whatever you called it. And within that, there is, there should be, if it worked out, there should be a new folder, Heg Win. And then within that, a bin folder. And within that, there should be this file called hegtool.bat. And that is actually, if you double click that, that actually brings up the heg tool. So the next thing to do is to actually go find a modus file. So I'll go file open HDF EOS format. And I'll navigate to where I have downloaded a modus file. Finally getting there. OK, so here is a modus file. It's the one with the .hdf extension. So you're looking for that HDF extension. I'll hit Open. Um, in this case, this is a uh, 250 meter resolution uh, reflectance product that has bands 1 and 2. Um, but in this case, uh, you can pick some or all of the bands within a modus file. So I'm picking my bands 1 and 2 reflectance. I'm going to put them into here. I'm going to leave everything at the default. You can subset the image if you like. You can uh, adjust how you do the resampling, lots of stuff like that. But I'm just going to leave it alone. Hit Accept. And then when you're ready to do it, you hit Run. Um, if it goes well, it'll create your GeoTIFF files. Um, if not, it doesn't seem to do very well at letting you know what the mistake was. So you may have to do some trial and error. And if you're in my class, you can let me know if you're having trouble. Thanks, everybody.